Hi everyone, for this next video, once again I have a commission to do and this is a lovely heavy lead crystal beer glass in a sort of a traditional shape with a sort of lumpy bit around here. It is very very thick and especially down the bottom here. The customer does not want a name on, it's a gift from the wife to the husband who's obviously a farmer. It's a beautiful Frisian cow and uh, obviously some dark areas on it and so I don't obviously make the black really black which would be clear glass so these little areas are going to be rather shiny it's going to lovely, have a lovely shiny coat uh, where it is supposed to be black and um, interesting animal this of course is a panel cut so this area here has got no engraving um, I will be engraving well, relatively deepish. You know what I'm. You know what I'm like. It's not going to be surface engraving. Put it that way. And um, yeah, I've done it quite quite large. It, this area will be stopping just before that cut there, so it'll be sort of like that. And uh, yeah, I think it, I think it should be good fun. I get some interesting co uh, commissions, don't I? <laughs> Radio, let's get going. Right, so guess what I've got in the drill? I've got a stone, and this time I've got my old blue stone. But as you know, any sort of half tone stone will be absolutely fine, and it's literally to just very basically map in some sort of uh, positioning um, of of the cow. It is extremely rough and of course not only are you seeing it slightly offset as usual because I can't put my camera right in the middle of my eyeballs. The camera is above and um, of course to the side but you will also see there's a huge gap between the paper and the surface of the glass and that is simply because it is so thick, the glass, especially down this bottom area. It's quite interesting how it tapers. That is enormously thick. Beautiful, beautiful lead crystal. Anyway, so out with uh, water, a lot of water, in fact, far too much water, <laughs> and a big old diamond burr. As I'm engraving, of course, this water and the diamond, or ra rather the glass dust, not the diamond dust, the glass dust is um, spitting all over the place. You can see it flying uh, every now and again when the water hits it and um, there it sprays everywhere, including, of course, onto my camera lens, which I, I usually remember to check it and um, anyway I hats off to how these cameras work because we go through most of the video or a large uh, proportion of the video with um, the blobs which would be blurring the picture it does blur it in, in places but you are still able to see all my engraving perfectly well it's quite bizarre. Um, lenses are very, very clever. Anyway, I did, in the end, clean the lens, of course. And I really do need to remember in future. Now, goodness knows, oh, here we go, lots and lots of water. Um, I'm not really sure why, why I'm running it so fast. But I do love to, to get those dramatic photographs. And in fact, these are quite dramatic. <laughs> um, anyway. So you might be asking, what on earth is she actually doing? Well, I am very roughly going over uh, the shapes of this head and where I see 
that the cow's head is is has got a, a raised ridge there I go deeper where there's a sort of a valley in the in the head I go shallower and then there'll be another ridge and I go deeper again and this lump on top of the head is is quite prominent in in all these um, creatures uh, all the Frisians anyway I'm not sure about all of them what do I know about cows really not much at all but um, that lump in the head is I've engraved that relatively deep and that's got a lot of curly long locks on it um, which we'll obviously do much later on okay so now um, I am going over the darker areas as well, of course, because I will be dealing with them at a, a later stage. But in the meantime, I'm creating the depths of um, the set or some sort of um, idea effect of the different depths to try and get a 3D visual and this is the very simple way of doing some pretty serious intaglio engraving, but it is not the the full on type of engraving that uh, a lot of engravers do, who have got a lot more time and perhaps don't need to make a huge amount of money from it. Um, <laughs> the normal way of doing this is to fill in the entire shape you can spend hours and hours and hours spending you know filling in the entire shape making it lovely and neat and smooth and then redrawing parts of the the animal into that shape then going deeper still and engraving all those areas out and then redrawing whatever is the sort of um, the next level of of detail, and so on and so forth. And this way, the way I'm doing it, um, we seem to get to that uh, effect relatively easily and in a much shorter time. Not quite, not as deep obviously, um, but it, it, it's giving you enough of a visual. And if it was a serious art piece that I'm going to be putting into my gallery and selling, then I would be engraving it slightly differently, more in, in the manner I have just described. Whereas this is a commission it is not going to be worth, well, what I'm saying, it, it is not a huge budget, so I'm not going to be spending days and days over it. Um, and so I do a more simplified version of intaglio engraving, which really is quite effective. You know, you can get amazing shading just from surface engraving. So when you are going a little bit deeper in the right areas and adding shading as well in this, this process that I quite often show you guys, um, you're going to be getting enough detail um, and enough relief effect. So, right, I have got a smaller diamond, of obviously, in the drill and I'm just carrying on with with the same sort of idea but where I want um, to be using a smaller area at a time because of the smaller details again here I'm going quite deep on these lines and the lines I am going deep on are the ridges that are lighter the ones that are sticking up in the image in the photograph because, of course, I will then be doing a half tone over the top of this. And where I've gotten really deep will remain lighter. Um, and it will give the impression, obviously, the effect that I need. Not that it, not that it matters which, li which line is which, because I've just made it up, actually, as I go along. I haven't traced it exactly. 
Um, same as most of this image, I have not traced exactly. Um, part of it I can't really even see, even the in inside of the ears, I can't really see what's going on, it's, it's too dark. So I'm kind of making it up. So now I have uh, a little Dura white and I'm very carefully going round um, the eyeball. Don't forget, as always, to create um, a little shape where it's deeper right in the center. Don't forget the center, otherwise he's going to have donut eyes or she's going to have donut eyes. And uh, then very lightly I just filled in uh, sort of the immediate vicinity of the eye. Now there's a, a lot of lumpy bumpiness going on now um, that I've removed the picture in the background. This is all I want really to get me going. I'm just kind of measuring up, not not that I can do anything about that now, but I, it, I just wanted to have a, a second check by running my fingers up uh, either side of the panel. And yes, the middle of the face was pretty much in the center and that's all I wanted. Um, a nice pink stone which will create a half tone and I am just li literally running it lightly over the top of the ridges and they will just be easy to polish. This pink stone of course um, at the moment it looks like it's coming up quite light. I'm not really bothered about that. It's still going to polish away and become darker very very easily. All these areas are, I'm going to run over with uh, rubbers. We're still pretty much in the preparation stage, the pre preparation of the canvas as it were. Now to make sure there are no uh, clear bits of glass in the background. I don't want a cow with holes and I've decided there's a lot more that needs to be filled in um, depth wise. His little, um, I don't know what you would call this little area, this sort of, I don't know, the top of the mouth. <laughs> it's, I really don't know. It's not the cheeks, it's not the snout. I don't know what you'd call that sort of midsection area. Um, that was quite deep there. Uh, of course, the deep areas don't really show now. Um, and of course, I am very lightly running over, even with this diamond, um, any areas that are still clear and then going deep where I want to and then just spinning it lightly over the top as well. Now I'm attempting to show you ridges. You can very vaguely see um, the ridges. I'm working dry, um, again, bulk of the work is already done, this is lovely, lo a lovely soft crystal, the diamond is really, really good, and um, it's easier to see what I'm doing and to show you what I'm doing while it's dry.
So back to the smaller diamond now. Um, the outer ear, um, I don't put a lot of detail on that and I am just putting a bit of lightness in it but it ends up being quite um, a dark ear in the end anyway. along the edges and just filling in the edges carefully without creating a deep outline. We don't want that. Just make sure that whatever you, you do on the edges, it all blends in nicely. sort of upper kind of upper lip area again checking on the on the picture it's quite it's quite deep when I say quite deep it pro, it's protruding quite a lot it's quite sort of lumpy and back up to his little her little crown well I don't know I keep calling it a he <laughs> anyway um just creating the edges above the other eye. I am not making uh, anything too deep in the background there. of chins going on here. Now you can see that the heaviest work is, is pretty much complete and now to start creating some shading effects, last little bits of touch up. <laughs> 
with the stone to fill in any blank areas and then we go on to shading. Again this is the blue stone but really whatever stone or even a finer grit diamond can be used for this. Something that will will um, work well with the rubber effectively be shaded out or polished out rather. You can see how the stone over the diamond has already softened that because the basic rule is the more roughed up the surface is, the more it's going to catch the light so it's whiter but as soon as you come along with a stone that's, going to, that's not as um, abrasive it's going to start to smooth out the diamond work and therefore the light starts to go through. Now I'm showing you the slightly different lighting angles so that you can see some of the ridges um, and how effective they are. I have a grey rubber in the drill now and this is where I begin to pick out some of the semi dark areas. You sort of look at a picture in layers, um, pretty much as I say, like painting, you're gonna, you're gonna have to think backwards and think of the layers. You soon get used to it. Oh, I've gone back with the diamond uh, just because I've noticed I need to make this sort of chin area a bit bulkier, a bit um, deeper and therefore more prominent. Now, if you look carefully, you can already see there are a few uh, slightly blurry areas, <laughs> which <laughs> is amazing that you can see anything at all, quite frankly. Uh, luckily, luckily, the middle of the picture is not too bad. Um, but the blurry patches are on the lens, of course. Now I've got a black rubber disc in the drill now and I am picking up very roughly. You can see how quick I'm going here and this is not adjusted, this is normal speed. Um, I am just zooming over where um, the, the cow has a sort of a darker black area as opposed to the white area of the face. And I am just kind of doing it very roughly where um, he had it. Now you can see how where I've gone over the eye I clearly need to flatten out some of those areas because I've made blobs where there shouldn't be blobs I don't think and uh, so the drill has not gone into them to polish them and so they are now standing out like big white lumps as though poor old cow has got something wrong. Um, <laughs> I will fix those and uh, yeah, I'll give her a little operation to get rid of her lumps. 
And you can see how very, very easily just going down the side of the ear there, for example, because it's shallow, I've gone deeper over the edges and then shallow. And where it's shallow, that drill just picks it up straight away and polishes out. So here I've got a Jura White in the drill and I'm just quickly neatening where I had gone too deeply in some places. Um, probably should have just taken a diamond and, or, or even a, diff, a, a rougher stone perhaps, um, but I just grabbed the nearest, nearest burr and decided to use that. Sometimes I get a little lazy <laughs> and I don't want to go searching again. Because I, when I take these things off, I just plonk them in the tray. And there are so many burrs in the tray. And whenever I try and and neaten them up, put them all in their place, all look smart, it, it doesn't take long at all for them all to be jumbled up again because I'm, I'm always in quite a hurry. Anyway, running uh, the, the Dura White lightly across the lips there, um, where it is most shallow, I am just taking the bit of diamond work off the shallowest edges. And so when I put a rubber to that, it will be really dark. So now I've got a tiny little brown rubber, which is going into the eyeball, which is a lovely shape, as you can see. It's slightly rounded, but it's not sort of popping out like he's got some sort of problem. Um, or she... Grey rubber again and zooming around the eye a bit more. Yeah, I did think it wasn't enough just using the Dura White. So I'm back with a diamond to do a better surface job here. Or in other words, preparing the surface. It needed to be it needed to be more level. So I'm not really sure what I had seen that made me uh, create those deep blobs there. Very strange. So I'll probably come back with a stone. Let me see. I wonder. Okay, we've got the Jura White, and I'm going over that again. Just to smooth it out a little bit more. And so this um, next burr will be um, a rubber, no doubt. Yes, a rubber to smooth it out again. So, thanks for watching guys, and I will shortly be showing you the rest of our car.